I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like, uh, uh, gosh, I can't think of what they're called now. You know, the little green balls, what are they called? Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. What is up everybody from our at t 5G virtual studios? Welcome on into the call up. I'm Susanna Collins. That is Jillian Sakovitz. You guys Happy round, round one of the Audi MLS cup playoffs are in the books and it has been a whirlwind of a week let me tell you um and i'm right off the bat we're just gonna get into something because um mls made us put out a bracket we had to fill out a bracket which we went on the record as saying we were not here for i don't like doing it jill doesn't like doing it it puts us in a, a very tough position so they put out these videos right and inevitably, inevitably, there are reactions. And well, let's just say that some of these reactions were not very nice. We're not very nice. Hey, P.S. guys, Twitter can be a really dark place sometimes. So um, in that vein, we decided we were going to read off some of our mean tweets. P.S. By the way, I just want all of you to know my bracket is perfect. Perfect. Through round one. Yes, I did pick RSL to upset Seattle. And so anybody that came at me, I'm just saying I'm Here's a question you. before you get, I want to get right into these mean tweets, but before you do, did anyone tweet at you when you were right? Just curious. No. Okay. Not one person. We'll, we'll leave that there. Yes. We'll leave Not that. one. Not one. Okay. So Jill's are, I, I have heard are a little more aggressive than mine. So I'm just going to, I'll read the, the meanest one that I got first. Okay. This person said, yo, this person is dumber than my reading skills. And I was like, that's kind of a knock on you, bro. That's like kind of a compliment. Uh, it's like, <laughs> like low key. All right, Suze. Well, mm -hmm. um, uh, again, in the vein of Thanksgiving and being nice to each other, I'll get into what everybody uh, said to me when I, who might have poor reading skills, picked Seattle and Atlanta <laughs> in the final. Oops. Here's the thing. You can't win, people. No. You pick, you pick Atlanta to go on because that's the team you know. That's the team you, you believe in. That's the team you see behind the scenes. And then you don't pick them. God forbid you pick like what Susanna did with like a Nashville. Mm -hmm. And then you got the entire Atlanta United fan base mad at you. So you mm -hmm. can't win. But anyway, Jillian Sakovitz's mean tweets. Let's go. Pretty clear this chick was on methamphetamine. Poor wretched soul. This is so biased. You are on 14 grams of crack. Homer. She doesn't think much, does she? <gasps> Neither make it to the final. New England beats SKC in final. FYI. Someone is stuck in 2018 and thinks that Miggy and Tata are still working for the five stripes. L O. Wow. Wow. That's aggressive. Oh, wait. And this is the last one. State of the podcast, when one of the hosts said, uh, this was our question to Matt Doyle last week, that if your team's not in the playoffs, give us a team oh, to Oh, yeah, this for. guy. You have one club. Every mm -hmm. other club other than yours is a rival. Embarrassing by the hosts. Stop sanitizing footy culture, you cringe yank. <laughs> Clearly a Brit. You but I was like, you know what? It's a low-key great name for a podcast. God. The cringe, cringe yank. Yanks. Yeah, I honestly. So, you know what? Let's just, we own it for sure. Sure, I'll be a guys. Yank. It, I don't it was care. Throwing, it was throwing some things at the wall with the picks. But let's be real. If history is any indication, that's what an MLS final is. is exactly. usually throwing stuff at the wall. Okay? Exactly. exactly. I apologize whatever it's it is so whatever and at least it's a bracket it's a bracket and mls cup playoffs are always just in completely insane so there is just there's no way there's no way that my perfect bracket is going to hold up i'm fully anticipating it to get blown up um at any moment i just want to read one more system. this one made me laugh this one made me laugh because i did pick nashville to win the whole thing <laughs> Someone said, did someone forget to tell Susanna Collins that Nashville has to win games to be MLS coach? That champions? one actually made me laugh. I saw <laughs> Which that. was funny because they had a bunch of draws, obviously. But hey, they beat Orlando. So there you go. Um, anyway, right. that was no more draws in the listen, playoffs. Listen, guys, playoffs, the point sister. the point is, is you know, that anything can happen and just be nice. Good grief. That was aggressive. That was really aggressive. Um, At first it hurt my feelings. Yeah. And then it was like, you know what? Just lay it on me. Just, I know, whatever. whatever. We, I mean, honestly, we're in that position. We, we ask God for forbid it. you say some, you know, here's the thing. On a three or four hour game broadcast, you have to be right the entire yep. time. Yep. No yep. one cares yep. about when you're right. 
No, exactly. Um, well, anyway. guys, as Jill said, it is uh, Thanksgiving week. Um, and it's just, been, I mean, it's my favorite holiday. And we have honestly so much to be thankful about. Number one, our guest today, uh, head coach of Sporting Kansas City, Peter Vermees, who we spoke to two years ago. We were so excited to get him on because he was a guy that we were like, we've only seen him in coach mode. We want to see him as a, a human being. So we're going to have... Um, a discussion with with Peter about maybe some of his Thanksgiving traditions, what Thanksgiving looks like in the Vermees household, and obviously um, SKC and their sort of run of form right now. They are in the conference semis and uh, going to be hosting RSL. Crazy. I will be there. I'm very excited. So we've got a lot to uh, talk to him about. So that's going to be great. But I will tell you, Jill, I was in Kansas City for their round one matchup against Vancouver. And I I, just, I love Kansas City. I've always loved going there. It's just I, Children's Mercy Park is fantastic amazing. Atmosphere. The fans are fantastic. The comm staff at Sporting Kansas City are amazing. And I should also shout out the Vancouver comm staff as well because they were so Two good lovely. Ones in that. So lovely. Um, but I just made a quick list of things that I was thankful for while I was there because I was so happy to be back at a playoff match. It just felt so good. So number one, the good weather. It was glorious in Kansas City that day. And I have been there when it's been very cold this time of year. So that was great. Um, the PR staff I mentioned, I got a hug from Peter Vermees, which was like one of the best moments of my life. Do you think he wants that? Like, I feel like Peter's not trying to advertise that he's a hugger. Exactly. But he gave me a hug, Jill. And I was like, oh, I want a Peter hug to start the It was holidays. great. It was like a really good hug too. You know, just like, you know, Ronnie, like Ronnie like Dyla that. too gave me a huge bear hug. No, I'm I just, totally lying. So oh, Ronnie Dyla did not, did not give me a bear hug. Wait, that would have been lovely. I can imagine him being a hugger though. This was your first time meeting him, you know, after it, it second time, right, second right, time's right. a charm. Um, Daniel Shalloway, and Johnny Russell being just the hilarious duo duo mm -hmm. that they are. They are okay. hilarious. P.S. They watch all of our stuff and they knew that you and I both picked Kansas City to move on. And oh, they were like, friends. you and Jill are the only smart ones. And I was like, thank hey, you very much. We're the boots on the ground, people. Vanny Sartini is as crazy and delightful as you would imagine. The man was losing his mind on the sidelines and I could not have been more here for it. He was getting just, the SKC fans were relentless and he just kind of kept like playing to them and it was great. And he was wearing the most phenomenal shoes ever. They were like these old school Gola shoes with the stripes on their style, everything. I Loved mean, he's it. Italian. Loved it. He's good. loved it. I was like, we have to get him on the call up next season because I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that he okay. will get that full time job. And finally, a, another hug from Brian White after they lost. And he walked over the field and like gave me a hug. And I was like, hey, man, great effort. And he was like, he's like, oh, thanks so much. Oh, he was man. like, he was like, I really enjoyed being on the pod. So that, here's my question for you on, on that is obviously, I know Atlanta United very well and yeah. they lost you know, a heartbreaker to yes. nothing at, at Yankee stadium. And it's always tough. Cause it's like, I'm very much, I don't want to insert myself in the moment, <sighs> but I also want to like feel that with them and let them mm -hmm. know, like I support you. So I always just give like a little bit of like the half grin, like, I know it's hard. It's uh, yeah, it was uh, tough. It's, um, it's a weird one to navigate, but you mentioned being thankful. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that you had such a beautiful um, kind of like heavenly experience in Kansas city. It, it also great. was fantastic to be back um, in the mix, Yankee Stadium for New York City FC and Atlanta United. I didn't get any hugs, but you know me, I'm not, I'm not a big hugger. Yeah. Um, I, I did get like some staff hugs, uh, but no, no player coach hugs, more player coach smiles. But my big moment was I saw Tati Castellanos' mommy <gasps> went viral when she flew in from Argentina oh. to New York City to pretend, present cast. Oh my God. To present Tati with the golden boot. And it was a really emotional That's moment. That's beautiful. And she stands out. Like she's got this crazy, amazing platinum hair. Mm -hmm. Like she just looks like the celebrity at the game. And she was standing right on the field. And I, I punked out and didn't take a selfie with her because I was too <laughs> scared and like shy. She would have like, loved it. I know. And like, she was like, to me, like the big person at the game. I was like, oh my God, I've seen you on social media. Wow. So I, I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, I regretted that. I wimped out, but I'm holding out hope for mm -hmm. when I go to New England on Tuesday. Okay. 
to host New York City that if Tati's mommy makes the trip, <gasps> I will approach her. Yes, you should. And um, I just have to be stronger and like really put myself out there. Yes, you do. You can do it. You're Jillian Sackovitz, darn it. Time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field. The man that has led Sporting Kansas City to the Audi MLS Cup playoffs 10 times in 11 seasons, the longest tenured coach in the league, Peter Vermees. Hey, Peter, the last time we had you on, it was our second ever episode, and it was May. <laughs> what year? May 2019. <laughs> wow. Seems like seems like a decade ago. It was a minute. Yeah, it's been a in, minute. In more ways than one. Okay, so about 12 hours or so, we found out that Sporting Kansas City will, in fact, be facing Real Salt Lake on Sunday at home. What was your reaction? Where were you when you were watching that RSL Seattle game on uh, Tuesday night? Yeah, I was at home. Uh, obviously, it was late. Uh, you know, I, you know, two overtimes and then penalty kicks. Uh, it was an interesting game from a lot of perspectives. Uh, you know, I've obviously I played in the league a lot of years, and I know what it's like when a team can dominate in every category, except at the end of the day, they don't score. And that's what really happened to Seattle. And you got to give a lot of credit to, to Salt Lake. Uh, they, it, it's not only they battled, but they were very committed. They, they believed, right? Um, they fought for everything. Guys were laying themselves out. There was that melee in the first half, probably 20 minutes in. You know, probably three times they could have scored on that one play, and and they didn't. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Salt Lake was in every action, and I mm -hmm. thought that was a difference in the game. And and sometimes, you know, it, when you when you when you don't stick a chance away here or there, it just it it just builds and builds, and the other team gets confidence, and that's what happened. So how do you prevent that happening to you? What happened to Seattle? How do you prevent that from happening? Well, well it would be great if, if you could score, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the easy one. Uh, but you know, look, we've we played them twice this year and they beat us both times. Uh so we're not we're not uh we're not immune to um what they can do. And so I you know, I always say that this league is is so interesting because you'll have a club that spends a lot of money on players and they don't win. And then you have a club that doesn't spend a lot of money and they can win. And so the parity in this league is just so close at times. And then when you finish the season and get into the playoffs, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And there's this, you know, we're all starting at the same place, even though you got home away, and, you know, okay, great. But you still got, you still got to be able to, 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 to use it to your advantage. And, and so I think the intensity, the aggressiveness and the commitment of teams just raises and teams that can defend, they always have a good chance to win in the playoffs. Let's talk about Sporting Kansas City's uh, current run of form. Obviously very high after their win where Susanna was. Um, but then when you ended the regular season, it was three straight losses. Obviously not the way uh, you want to go into the postseason. But there was so much drama um, on decision day. You know, Pro and the referees coming out admitting that they made a mistake. You were furious in the post-game press conference. Um, a couple of weeks later, you know, it, in a mistake that had implications for multiple teams, how have you quantified that now? You know, uh, I don't think you can ever in sports take the emotion out of it. That's why we all love it, right? Uh, it's why last night, again, any team can beat any team on any given day. And so as much as that day, yeah, I, I was. Of course I was furious. I mean, I'm the – I'm the – at the end, I'm the leader of of this club. It's it's my job to protect and defend. Um, I probably would have changed some of my comments. Um, I, I would. I mean, but I, it's not. You know, I've been a part of this league since 1996. I I, I love the league. I do. Uh, I wouldn't have spent all the time that I spent in this league if I didn't. And um, I have the utmost respect for all the people that have put all the time and effort into this league. But at the same time, um, what probably I learned really early on when I started coaching is that when the game's done, you, you, the next day, the faster you can get away from that game and start mm -hmm. putting your energy to the next, that's the most efficient thing that you can do. And so I, I thought our players handled it really well after the fact, and we gave them a couple of days off, we all came back. 
we put it to rest and we were able to start focusing on the next steps. And, and that's what we've done. I want to talk to you about the international break because, you know, to your point, you kind of said that you, you, you want, you have to have a short memory, right? In soccer, you want to get on quickly to the next game, especially after a loss. And so the international break happens after you guys, you know, as Jill pointed out, the, the three consecutive losses to end the regular season. And for some teams, that can that break can be sort of detrimental to any kind of momentum that you're building. Um, but for you guys, and you spoke about it after the game, you kind of utilized it as like a reset. So what was the what were the conversations like after that? Like knowing that you had kind of this two week break before you've got to get into that playoff mentality. What were you guys focusing on, and what were you telling the guys? I, I, the first thing was is after the game, I told all the guys that they had off Monday, Tuesday, and we're coming back Wednesday, and Wednesday was. Honestly, a nothing day for all the players. It was just like a regen introduction day. Thursday and Friday were a, a lot of the same, uh, really easy type stuff. But the conversations were really simple. And then I told the guys that in that first week that we're not going to talk about tactics. We're not going to talk about anything. We're going to do things that I think that are – I always think that are things that take you away, kind of uh, – make you uh, clear your head, right? And usually it's like anything, any sport that you go, if you step onto a basketball court, what do you do? You shoot hoops, right? You don't, you don't work on your dribble or, you know, passing, right? You shoot hoops. You want to, you want to shoot. So we did a lot of stuff around the goal just to get the guy's minds clear. Number one, the, the other was, is that um, I, I am a big, big believer that you have to be really honest with yourself. You, you know, I don't I don't believe in putting things under the rug and just hopefully it stays there and nobody sees it. I I think it was really important for us because I don't know if you know, statistically, anytime this year that we had a buy or a two week break and then we came back that next game, we came back, we lost. Mm. And so uh, we spoke about that. And the nice thing was, though, in this situation, we had a build up to the game which was very similar to when you're playing like a Saturday, Saturday, or, you know, Sunday, Sunday, whatever, a week between uh, each of your games, it gave us to get into our routine. I think that really helped the guys a lot. And then, and then the final piece is, is that when you have that kind of time, you don't have to try to, you know, it's like cramming for a test. You don't have to try to learn everything all in one night. We actually could mm. break it up and, and, and leave it a, a little bit more simplified for the guys. You know, something that we is so obvious in, in whether it's these Zoom meetings that we have to have where we talk to Daniel Shalloway or Johnny Russell or Susanna being in Kansas City, is that there's just a really good feel-good attitude amongst this group. And it sounds a little cliche, but you can feel the the camaraderie um, in this team. How much of a factor is that, Peter? And where does this team's chemistry kind of rank amongst all the other groups you've coached? Yeah, it's actually a really good question. What I'd say to you is I think that we put a lot of stock into uh, when we're recruiting players for our team. It's one thing to recruit players that fit into the way that you play because there's a lot of good players out there that wouldn't do well in our club, not because they're bad players, just because they don't fit, right, from a soccer perspective. But the other thing that we put a lot of stock in is the attitude, mentality, the personality of a person. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always very proud of the fact that the guys that we have are, are good guys. They're incredible guys in our community. Um, and they, they've, they, as soon as they come in, they adopt what the club is. And, you know, our club is very, very attached to Kansas city. It's very attached to our charitable foundations. And because of that, that lends itself to a really good locker room. It doesn't mean all the guys are just nice guys and, you know, they get along and they go to breakfast, lunch and dinner every day with each other. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. It's, it's more that they're, they're team first guys. They understand they're not they're, – they're selfless, not selfish type mm -hmm. of guys. And I think that that lends itself to really good camaraderie. And then, and then the final piece is, is that when – you, when you're also looking at recruiting players, you know, I, I, I tried to recruit players that have um, really strong personalities because I believe that you want guys in big moments that will bend, but they won't break. And weak personalities, they break. Strong personalities bend and come right back. Oh, 
Love I'll it. Hear that. <laughs> I know it's powerful stuff. Uh, no, it's amazing. Um, and it's true. And I think it's, it's a very underrated factor amongst successful teams is that, you know, teams that you see winning consistently, there is such a good sense of chemistry and camaraderie there. Um, and it's clearly cultivated at Sporting Kansas City. Um, one of the things that I love, I loved so many things about being at your match last weekend. Yeah, um, Suze just wants being, to join the team. I literally, I'm like, can I just move to Kansas point. City? It was delightful. And the weather was great. <laughs> I had, it was just, it was just incredible. Um, I had so much fun, but one of the, my favorite parts of being there was that I was privy to what I understand is maybe like a tradition that has been happening, but we didn't know about, and that is you having a glass of wine at your post game presser and they brought it in. You took it, you kind of, it was discreet. You hit it, but I saw it with my own eyes um, and I could not be more here for it. I love it. Can you kind of tell us the genesis of this tradition when it started um, and what kind of wine are you drinking? So let, let me clarify. What I try not to do is I try not <laughs> to drink it during the the press conference itself but the tradition is a really simple one so um uh my owner's wife bonnie illig that is who brought it in um she's she's such a tremendous lady she just really is she's so down to earth that uh, i hope she doesn't get embarrassed <laughs> of me explaining this but i'll i'll, I'll try to do it uh, as best i can here so I was joking with her one day. This is years ago. So obviously I've been around there for a long time and they come to every game. They come to every post game and you know what our post game is after the game in the field club. And so she, one, one day I came to her after a win and we were in there talking and we were having a glass of wine and, and I had just stated to her, I said, Bonnie, how come we're drinking this wine? Because upstairs in the, what's called, you've been in the victory suite upstairs yep. at the wine closet. And there's some very good bottles of wine. Up <laughs> and I said, you know, those bottles are not down here. And I said, you know, I said, to her, I said, you know, we should think about doing something where when we win, start bringing down the good bottles, you know, when we're when we're down here in the field club after a game. So the tradition is basically if we win, she then has them go up and get a couple <laughs> of bottles of the good wine. And then she brings me a glass. So. What is it I'm drinking? It's always very good. It's high quality. That's what I can. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, oh, I love it. Yes, it's Bonnie. Old and it's expensive. Here That's for Bonnie. Great. Yes. Well, uh, some of us will be drinking wine or water or whatever on Thanksgiving. And Peter, maybe this is the one time in the entire MLS season, maybe, that you are guaranteed to not go to work. Can you confirm or deny? Will you be on the Sporting Kansas City training grounds tomorrow? I cannot say <laughs> emphatically I will not be here. I was just talking to somebody about it today. I wasn't telling them that they had to come, but I, I think if all goes well, I, I will not be here, but there's a possibility. I, you so have every key in that building, right? What's like that? Every, you have every key in that building. Yes, I have it's called it's <laughs> I have the master key. Yes. This sounds like a call-up episode, expensive wine, and the master key. That's all <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. I like Incredible. That. Incredible. Um, okay, so we want to get a sense, Peter, though, after after uh, you may or may not be working tomorrow, what does, what does Thanksgiving look like in the Vermees household? Like, are you doing any cooking? What is, what's kind of your traditions? So I never cook. <laughs> I've, ne I've never cooked, and I never will. <laughs> It's it's just one of those things that I have zero interest in. Mm -hmm. um, my wife actually is a great cook, so it works out tremendously. My my kids will come over. They're older. They'll come over with their significant others, um, and we'll spend it, it at home. And you know, it always it's kind of like uh, so on that uh, on our last game. Obviously, the next day was was my birthday. Well, not obviously, but the next day was my birthday. Aww. So I was really fortunate, or they were really fortunate, that we won the day before because it wound <laughs> up being a really good day because they all came over. So now that we're still before the next game, it winds up still being a really good day. But we'll uh, honestly, my wife makes a turkey, and we're we're kind of normal like everybody else in that regard. Um, but I, I personally enjoy being at home and not if I'm going to do it and not having to go anywhere. 
Um, I like it if people do come over the house and, you know, we can spend time with either family and, and or friends. We're going to dive into some quick rapid fire Thanksgiving with Peter Vermees. So first question up, Peter, is what are your thoughts on MLS on Thanksgiving? Uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, I really do. I think it's I, I don't think that we should be concerned about, say, football or what have you, because you, sometimes you just got to create your own niche. Um, and, and that's the important aspect. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all comes about. Peter, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Ooh. <laughs> it's a hard one. I, I would have to say that my wife makes great mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh. And so the gravy can go on everything. So, yeah, I would say it's that, that's probably what it is. So mm-hmm. you're, a great, you're a gravy fan? I am. Okay. I am. Our Thanksgiving guest, guest last year was Landon Donovan, who had some very strong opinions on gravy. Hated gravy. Mad, mad about gravy. So, okay, Peter is here for gravy. That was one of our other questions for you. What is your least favorite dish? What were you going to say? I, I don't. I don't like. I don't like. Uh, uh, gosh, I can't think of what they're called now. You know the little green balls. What are they called? Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Not like, a Brussels sprout. Not here for them. <laughs> I'm not. And they show up on tables a lot. I don't, yeah. I don't like those. They're You're very right. trendy. The I'm not an onion guy, so if you put onions like in your stuffing, I, I won't eat it. That's me, it's Peter. Not- that is me. I and th- it's I get so much flack for it in my family, but I like will not touch anything. Onions. I get I get it without that's onions. Gross. So okay. that's my. <gasps> oh, I love it. We're sympathetic. Go there. That's fantastic. Um, do you do you watch NFL? On Sunday, or yes, okay. Yeah, I, I'm an I, I'm a big fan of the NFL. Yeah. Um, Who's your team? Well, I mean, I'm ultimately a Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, plus. And plus, <laughs> I, I grew up in, you know, Jersey, so right by the Philly Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Um, it's good because Andy Reid coached both those teams, so yeah. it works out well. Um, but I'm a big fan because I, I love the I, I love the process and the organization of the NFL. I think it's really good. Um, have you met Patrick Mahomes? Because he is now – one of the owners, like, what are what? What's that been like? I have, I have yeah. actually. Uh, contrary to a lot of people, I don't even know if I should say this, but he actually comes and works out over here uh, certain days of the week, but in the morning, early. You let him in with the master key. He's already he he knows how to get in. He's got a <laughs> he's got a master key too. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. He's Patrick Mahomes after That's all. Right. This season, in general, Peter, a lot has gone back to normal. Um, you know, limited out of conference play, obviously a bit of a bummer, but what has been um, the most unique part of the 2021 MLS season for you so far? I think during this whole COVID time, I think there's one thing that all of us have realized, or at least I have as, as a coach, and that is the shorter trips, the, the hour and a half trips, you know, if I got to fly from, we got to fly with the team from here to Minnesota or to Dallas or Houston or whatever, we can do that in the same day. So we can fly in that morning fly there, go right to a hotel, do our thing, go to the stadium, play the game, and then fly back and be home on the same day. That was something that, you know, I, I would never have thought that we could have done at a, at a high qual- in a high-quality environment, right? So where the guys go out in the field and they can perform it really, really well. I've been presently surprised by that, and I think that really bodes well for the future because as the league grows, I, I think to save time, you need the ability to be able to do that. I think the other thing, too, is, is that – all of this has forced all of us with the congested schedule has forced us to use our rosters a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's a good thing. It's increased the player pool for each of our teams. I think uh, players have been able to demonstrate that they can perform at this level. And I think those those are two really high quality things for the league. Before we let you go, we had uh, Daniel Shallowy and Johnny Russell on as a tandem. They came oh. on the podcast together. Terrifying, so you can only imagine, you can only imagine uh, the the craziness that ensued there. I mean, those guys, they're, 
they are they are two very uh, big personalities and then you put them together um and it's just it's chaos but like in the best way possible and they were kind of telling us filling us in on some of the pranks that they pull in the locker room we heard a really incredible story about what they did to uh, Gianluca Busio's car which was hilarious are incredible you, is a good word Peter are you tuned in <laughs> to the kind of locker room antics that go on or do you try to just kind of stay out of it okay there are i'm sure there's some i don't know about <laughs> but like the one that you're talking about for example actually it's not the two of them but johnny did it right johnny's the one who broke his windshield oh. but that's so johnny mm -hmm. uh i'm sure he didn't tell you about what he did to our athletic trainer a few years back did he no did not didn't yeah. mention that you uh, could tell us <laughs> well he he injured him let's put it that way he, he truly injured him uh <laughs> And so, but it's just him. Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, it's yeah. He's got an unbelievable sense of humor. Right. He's great in the team. So so right. just a side note on that. So I'm not sharing anything crazy here. So we do a we do a test every year. I do a test with all the guys every year, and uh, it, it it helps me with knowing what their personality truly is, how mm -hmm. they how they learn. You know, is it auditory, is it visual, whatever. And uh, so. A lot of guys in the NFL take the same test. So the Wonderlick? No, no. <laughs> That's what I think. Of. It's 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 called the tap test. But okay. anyway, uh, when when it's all done, there's eight different archetypes that you can be. You're one of those. And so John, well, so Tom Brady is a rocket. Is what his is what his archetype is in the same test. Johnny Russell is a, is a rocket. So yes! it just tells you, kind of, you know. Wow. Yeah. Johnny Russell is a rocket. I He's mean, anytime, rocket. anytime you can uh, kind of elevate into that same stratosphere as Tom Brady, I feel like that's a good thing. No doubt. It's a really good thing. Wow. And then it makes the windshield not such a big, it makes it not, you're like, okay, I can, I can deal with that. Suze, we got to take the tap test. Um, know. You know, <laughs> we'll have to figure out what we are. Lord we're knows. Who what knows? I, Peter, did you take it? What are you? I did. I'm, I'm actually, so, so you get two, you get two R, so you get a primary and a secondary. Okay. So I'm an Eagle rocket. As well. Yes. Wow. I'm Eagle rocket. That sounds great. Are there any bad things you can be in this mix? Of no, things? no, okay. there's nothing. It's it, it, honestly, truly it's great because you, it's amazing when you take it, when you're done and you read all the strengths and then the opportunities are it, 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 it it's amazing how spot on it is I, this is going to be a new thanksgiving tradition make everyone take the tap test <laughs> Who look it up, look it up. You'd like, look it up. it's really yeah. good it's really good oh that is amazing Peter, uh, thank you so very so much great. thank you so much for coming on good luck this weekend i'll see you there um and enjoy your thanksgiving with your family my pleasure you guys too have a great thanksgiving here for this, Susanna, on Sunday, I will be heading to Chester, Pennsylvania for the Philadelphia Union taking on Nashville SC. I am pumped, but I am also pumped for, okay, <laughs> we got to bring this way back. We're talking mm -hmm. predictions, whatever. My preseason coaching rankings, you had Luchi Gonzalez. For best dressed. This is for, for best, best dressed. dressed. Yes. Yes. I'm getting there. I had, I had Jim Curtin. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that was just because of the sneakers and the hoodie mix. Mm -hmm. I think we have given Jim Curtin so much confidence and so much. <laughs> we've pumped him up so much this season that he really kicked it up a notch in the playoffs, sporting a black bombery jacket that so very casually on the sidelines against the New York Red Bulls had a little tiny Prada insignia on it. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, he looked great in it. For me, this is almost too much because it's like, I like like the Philly hoodie sneaker gym, but now it's like, now Jim is like a legit fashionista. And like, mm -hmm. is it subtle enough? Like, how do we feel about this? I love it. I actually, <laughs> no, I, I love it because it's not often that we see, I mean, we, we have some very sharp dressed coaches in major league soccer, not ones that are, you know, where the brands, right. And this, as you said, it was a very subtle little Prada logo, but enough that, you know, that Jim Curtin knows a thing or two about fashion. And so I, I, my first reaction when I saw it was like, man, that's a step up from the uh, call up hoodie that we <laughs> just said. Oh, dude, However, that hurt, that hurt. I know, I know, Ouch. I know. However, I love it. I love it because I feel like, I feel like to your point, we have kind of given him the, 
like the cojones to be like, oh yeah, I am a fashionista. And you know, like an MLS, an MLS coach wearing Prada on the sidelines. Like, yes, that is legit. That is legit. That is like, that is like Jose Mourinho style. Like, here we go. I love it. I love it. You I think, think it's, it's great. Like and I think he looked great. Marino. Oh my gosh. We're really getting off, <laughs> off the rails now. Well, he did well, say you know Jim Curtin said he wanted to coach in Europe this week. He he said that like that is something that he has thought of. So uh, maybe this is him kind of like just strutting that European style. He's like, look, I can. I will in. be on the ground on Sunday and I will ask Jim. Ask him. Where the inspiration for that came from. And mm-hmm. did he walk into the Prada store himself and pick it out? We I will need to know. Him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. in you know, it's Thanksgiving people. So I, I believe last year we had Landon Donovan on around this time. And we had this whole conversation about, you know, our favorite Thanksgiving foods. And he was like, so anti gravy. And there's always there's always like polarizing foods right around Thanksgiving. So I saw two things this week that I had visceral reactions to one, like and very different one, different reactions. Okay, the first one was Instead of like a pumpkin pie or just a regular pie, this was a giant Reese's peanut butter cup that looked like a pie, but it was a giant Reese's peanut butter cup. Like size of a cake? Like a size of a pie. Like, like, yeah. That's a lot of peanut butter. It's a lot of peanut butter, but I was also like, yeah, I'm here for it because I love me some Reese's. So that was, that, that I was like, ooh, I could get down with that. This next one. Can I just say one thing about the Reese's thing? Yes. It just, for lack of a better way of saying it, it doesn't sound very hydrating. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's probably 100% accurate. So like that's a lot I don't want to think about it, though. I'm just going to just think right, about it. That's the, not what Thanksgiving's about. It's exactly. not about thinking about the after effects. No. Okay. No. Next. Okay. This next one. This is just, this is too much. This is just too much. We've gone too far. So there is a restaurant in New York that has come up with a Thanksgiving pizza. So it's basically like all the foods that you eat on Thanksgiving, turkey, cranberry, stuffing on top of a pizza. (laughs) And there was a picture of it and there was like little pieces of corn. And yes, exactly. I threw up in my mouth a little bit when I saw it. And I was like, this is just, I draw the line. I draw the line. This is just, we've gone too far. Is there tomato sauce on it? I think there might be, which also just like, I was like, oh God. You want to know it, who this reminds me of? It's making me sick. Who? Lou Sackovitz. Oh! My dad, being a Bronx guy, if anything needed a fix, one time I made pumpkin mac and cheese that literally fell out of everyone's mouth <laughs> over how disgusting it was. And he just he just stood up, he poured ragu on it, and then he put it in the microwave, and then he ate it. Oh, God. Something Not about New Yorkers like this. It. Put, if there's tomato sauce on it, it's kind no. of just like uh, the great equalizer. Yeah, no. That's no, why not it's here for it in New York, but I want to vomit in my. I am not, vomiting actually. I know it's disgusting. I, I, and when you see the picture, Jill, it's just I had this like visceral reaction to it. I could not be less here for it. So there you go. No to Thanksgiving pizza. So if this isn't in the spirit of the holidays, I don't know what is after their win, after Nashville SC's win over um, Orlando, Yonder Caddies did the ultimate jersey swap, but in a way <laughs> cuter way. He Apparently, a fan called out to him like, you're going to score. He does. And he does a jersey swap with the fan who has an insane Nickelodeon jacket on it. I mean, you've got SpongeBob. You've got Hey Arnold. You've got the Rugrats. It's raging, but it looks great with yellow shorts. It honestly looks too good to be true. And they swapped the jersey and the raging Nickelodeon winter jacket. Oh, I love I it. when I in Philadelphia on Sunday when the Union host Nashville, if Cadiz has this jacket on, I'm going to die. And mm-hmm. I'm going to ask for a photo in it because I feel like it's iconic. Oh, it's it, it was an incredible jacket. Our producer, Galena, sent us a screenshot of this last night after the game. She was like, oh, my God. And I was like, that it's so fitting. is it's it was perfect. It was so perfect. And he was so happy. Obviously, they just won. And then he's got this like just bright, obnoxious coat on. And then this finding out the story behind it made it even more delightful. I love it. I really hope it makes an appearance in Philadelphia. You got to keep your I, eye 
peeled can, can, for that. One last thing is, like, I want this fan, though, to get this jacket back. So, like, after MLS Cup... I, I would see, I would be like, no, take it. I would really? like, oh yeah. I would be like, no, this like, I, I would be so honored that okay. Yonder Cadiz like took my jacket and wore it. That would be such a point of pride mm, for okay. me. I'd be like, okay, no. then I feel, I feel less. Imagine they win MLS Cup and like Cadiz is up there <laughs> celebrating right? with your Nickelodeon jacket. What's on tap? All right. Well, as we said, round one is done, but the Audi 2021 MLS Cup playoffs are in full swing tomorrow with Major League Soccer's first ever, first ever Thanksgiving Day game. So get yourself some turkey, slice of pumpkin pie, maybe a little cocktail, whatever, and uh, get ready for your favorite new Thanksgiving Day tradition, which is going to be watching MLS action. We've got the Portland Timbers traveling to Colorado to take on the Rapids at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox and Fox Deportes. I'm going to make my entire family turn off NFL so that we can watch MLS. I'm really excited excited. to hit them with this and be like, (laughs) we're turning on soccer! They're like, anyway. again, do you ever not watch soccer? Oh, God. No, we no, don't. No, we don't. The answer and is no. So, Susanna and I, like we've mentioned, we are back on the road this weekend. Susanna will be going to her new favorite place, Kansas City, as they take on Real Salt Lake Sunday, November 28th, 3 o'clock Eastern. That's on ABC and ESPN Deportes. While I'm going to be heading down to Philly to watch hey, yeah. the Union host Nashville at 530 Eastern time on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. Then I'll be off to New England to see New York City again and Bruce Arena in the New England Revolution. Tuesday night's game, November 30th, 7.30 Eastern. You can catch that game on FS1 and Fox Deportes. Oh my God, we have so many good matchups to look forward to. I'm super pumped. Okay, Um. also we've got a ton of playoff action left to go, but 2022, just around the corner, people. And uh, earlier this <gasps> week, home openers this is were like a announced. Christmas tree. Wait, I know, wait, wait. I know, I know. But you guys, the home openers were announced. So the 2022 season kicks off on Saturday, February 26th. All right, get your parkas out, kids, because it's going to be a little chilly. Um, Columbus will welcome Vancouver to Lower.com Field, and LAFC welcome Colorado to uh, Bank of California at 3:30 p.m. Eastern. Charlotte FC debuts at Audi Field against DC United on February 26th. Um, so for the full list of home openers, you can head on over to MLSsoccer.com. It's going to be here before <laughs> we know it. I don't before have to we know actually it. get out my podcast. I might still have my Christmas tree up. Like, because Atlanta who knows? United is hosting Kansas City in Atlanta on that. Talk about a good game. That's it's a great so game. It's funny because of the way that, you know, we haven't had it. Oh, cross conference play mm-hmm. and now two years or we haven't had a lot of it. Like what? I get to see Peter and SKC in Atlanta. That's so exciting. I know. I know. Totally yeah. here for it. Um, guys, this has been so much fun. Huge thanks to Peter Vermees for joining us. And uh, thank you for tuning in and listening all season long. We are so thankful to our viewers and our listeners. I am so thankful for our producer, Galena. She is the best and I am Obviously, more than thankful for my beautiful co-host Jillian Sakovitz. You are right back at you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Right back at you. You said it so well. I echo all of those sentiments. <laughs> and uh, thanks again to our great listeners. If you can rate, subscribe, give us a review, and have a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sakovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up. And if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call-Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?